What is up guys? Intrepid Studios held a Q&A with myself, Chibi of the Golden Feather, and Samurg just over a few hours ago where we got to ask Steven Sharif, the man himself, some excellent questions about all things Ashes of Creation. And within it, we got a ton of new information about the game and about the upcoming testing phase of Alpha 2. Starting with the world map, which was my first question I asked and something I was very curious about, I had originally expected the world map for Alpha 2 to be the zones shown on the map with the names listed and the other ones being those that Intrepid would keep fairly close to the chest to not reveal all of the surprise of the game. But I was wrong on that. As it seems, we will see mostly the western continent of Vera at the start of Alpha 2, but keep in mind, not all of these zones will be in at the launch of the testing phase. That is how I feel every time I jump into a new MMO. And to be honest, it sucks ass. Excuse me. Um, oh, it's, sorry, wrong clip. That's a, that's a big question. Um... We have a lot of zones that are planned for Alpha 2. Not all of them will be online by the time Alpha 2 launches, um, but they will be uh, continuously integrated and launched as part of Alpha 2 continuing forward. Um, you know, the big areas obviously are the Riverlands, uh, the Badlands, the, the Sand Squall Desert, uh, the Tropics, um, the forest areas, some of the tabletop mountains and the um, tundra and ice areas, um, you know, and then we want to obviously have the loops around our naval <laughs> zones partly represented. I apologize for coughing, guys. Um, or as some called our uh, last week's preview, the Tower of Coffin. Uh, <laughs> that was good. But um, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of areas that are planned. When we talk about like level of completion, what goes into really making a particular zone? So now looking at the map, you have the Riverlands, the Badlands, the Sand Squall Desert, the Tropics, the Forest, the Tabletop Mountains, and some tundra and ice area. So basically, it sounds like we are seeing everything on the west side of the map with the exception of the Jundark jungles and the volcanic regions at some point in Alpha 2. But just because Steven didn't straight out confirm those last two doesn't mean they won't pop up. Steven also stated that when a zone is roughly 60 to 70% complete, they will be ready for Alpha 2 testing. So as you'd imagine, even going into the Riverland, you're not gonna get the full experience within that game because it is an alpha. It's not meant to be complete. It's meant to test the systems and test the content and make the game good. We also learned that Alpha 2 may see some of the eastern continent eventually as well, but also stating that that region is not something that is needed for the start of Alpha 2 testing, so if it's not ready at the launch of the testing period, it'll be added later on. From there, I guess you can expect that we will see the human starting areas, which we already knew in the Riverland, and I would imagine the dwarf starting areas as well if we're getting the tropics and part of the tabletop mountains, as Steven said. Whereas the orcs and the elf starting areas are on the other side of the map, so we probably won't see any of those at the start of Alpha 2. And who knows where exactly the Tolnar are hiding. I also asked Steven about the Alpha 2 timeline and how long it would likely run for, which he didn't exactly answer that, which I'm not surprised at all, as if he did, we would be able to pin down his release timetable a bit more, and in, I don't think Intrepid's ready to give that up yet. But he did state again that Alpha 2 will not be feature complete, and they will adapt to testing to react to players seeing burnout and low points in testing by consolidating testing to specific things, or doing server wipes when needed. They will also continue to release new things during Alpha 2, and again, more specific focus testing on those new things may be done to increase participation from other players when they start to see the numbers dwindle a little bit. When it comes to feedback though, through testing and launch, Intrepid is constantly listening to it and may adapt to it, but they don't want Ashes of Creation to have an identity crisis, so to speak. There are systems that are core to the game that will not likely change, such as open world dungeons and things like that, but they will tweak some of the more ancillary systems based on player feedback if needed. If you missed the latest timeline for Alpha 2, it is said to be starting up towards the end of this year with internal testing, slowly inviting PI testers, then Alpha 1 testers, and then Alpha 2 testers, so we probably have a little bit more than a year before it's finally up and running. Overall though, I had a great time on the Q&A, and I am very happy that they invited me on. It was a great experience, and I'm very grateful to have had that chance to chat with Steven and the other content creators and Margaret behind the scenes, and I hope you guys found some 
some of these questions helpful and refreshing. There will be a lot more videos on this Q&A as there is a ton of information packed into that that will be coming out in the next few days. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you made it this far into this video, well, I assume you enjoy learning more about Ashes of Creation. So help me out and click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to stay up to date with all of the Ashes of Creation news. If you are new to Ashes and you've yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more to come.